and I'm going to delete this non-numerical input so that it doesn't cause me problems in the future, which it will um, if you leave it there and then end up selecting it for your graph. So here we are. Excel has done the hard work for us and it's compiled a list of frequencies for each of the bins that we've established. But you may have been asked to build not a frequency distribution, but a relative frequency distribution or a probability distribution. So there's one additional step that we need to go through before we can graph that, and that is to calculate relative frequency. Relative frequency, or the probability of drawing a county randomly and getting a median household income that falls into any of these bins, can be calculated once we've found the total number of bins. The easiest way to find the total number of bins is to simply sum up all of the frequencies that Excel has counted. Now if we go to the Home tab and use the Auto Sum function, it will do just that for us. So as we can see, it's not counting the, or not adding the label column but it has instead added all the subsequent columns and there are a total of 100 observations that Excel has counted in our frequency column. Now just to check this or to refresh your memory we may go back to the original data tab and observe that indeed we have 101 rows of information and of course not counting the first which includes only labels we have 100 counties in Kentucky. Now going back to sheet 2 how do we calculate relative frequency? Well frequency is the number of observations in each bucket relative frequency is the probability of any of these counties having a median income that falls into each of these buckets and the way to calculate that is simply to divide the number of occurrences by the total number of occurrences which is our sum and it looks like I made an error here perhaps okay so as we can see here this is B2 divided by B54 now there's a problem if I click on this formula and drag it down we're gonna get errors because I have not locked the cell reference for our total number of counties so I will go into the formula and simply hit F4 in front of the cell reference for our total number of counties and hit enter and then click on this little box here and drag it down and that'll copy the formula down and it will calculate a relative frequency for each of these different bins for median household income. Now if we've done everything correctly our sum of relative frequency will add up to 1 and it looks like we've done everything correctly. Now to prevent confusion I will go ahead and add borders here that will indicate that these are sums and are not to be confused with data and uh, to do that I'll add a single top border and a double bottom border and that will indicate for me that that is a sum of the above. Alright now we've got all of our data and, and all that's left really is to go ahead and build our chart. And in order to do that, we will go to Insert and we will insert a scatter plot. Uh, I like the look of this one. I'm going to move this over just a touch. Uh, now that we've got our chart here, it's not very interesting looking because we need to put in data. So we will click this button here that is labeled Select Data and we will uh, add a series. So I clicked Add there. I will click this button so that we can select our X values. Uh, selecting labels or words of any type can, can really cause problems in a graph, so I will just select the numerical values here. Uh, in order to go all the way down, I'll hit Control shift down and then I will click on the Button tab again. Now for our Y values, the vertical axis of our graph uh, we want that to be probability or relative frequency and so I will again select the first number and hit control shift down and thereby selecting all of the relative frequency data. 
Now the series name will be the probability distribution of Kentucky County median household income or something along those lines. And uh, now that we've got all this information in here, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And go Control Home. Now here is our, our graph as it stands. But of course, you always want to label your axes. And this particular format does not give that option. So we will choose an alternate format. There's one up here with that allows for us to label our axes. We'll select that. Also, we only have one series here, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to label it. We'll get rid of that and blow things up just a little bit here. Now, once again, the vertical axis is probability or relative frequency. And a horizontal axis will be median household income or county median household income. And we'll capitalize that M. Now at this point it's very important to try and avoid a common error which is a disassociation of the graph and the actual values of the horizontal axis. And the way to prevent this is simply to make sure that you haven't selected any words or labels in your chart input. And you would notice this problem if, when looking at the distribution, uh, the, the peaks it, the peaks were not associated with the values uh, for your bins. This one looks all right um, because I haven't selected any words in my chart input and so I'm actually kind of happy with this one. I think that uh, it's ready to print. And now of course you may want to you may want to customize your graph a little bit you can do that by double clicking on it and there are a whole bunch of style choices here. Uh, we can add a shadow. Uh, it's kind of a nice shadow there and play with the transparency of the shadow and the blur effect. Uh, also the color that you're working with. Uh, it's not a particularly good color but anyway. And you can play with all these other all these other options. And when you're happy with it, then you can print it out and be done with it. Uh, so that is my how-to for building a probability distribution or a relative frequency distribution of any particular variable. I hope it was helpful. And um, if you liked it or didn't like it, uh, you can let me know in the comments.